Hey, welcome in everybody to the Philadelphia Eagles Sports Fanatic News. Our top picks we want the Eagles to get for some if they fall to us. For others, they probably very likely will be there. I am Joe Borg, joined by Andrew Santangelo. I hope everyone's having a great day. Let's get right into it. And Andrew, I'll go right to you and ask, give us your top draft prospect, um, who you want the Eagles to get. First, actually start with someone you would want them to get if they fall to us, so not like a massive pipe dream but they could fall to us and then start with who you have um because you think that said person might not fall to us yeah e- easy here i think um the pick i want the eagles to go after is hopefully you get Devonte smith jalen waddle or jamar chase one of those three to fall to you and i think that's the easy pick if one of the three do however i do believe all three guys will be off the board by the eagles pick including kyle pitts i think he'll be the first guy off the board in terms of receiver wise uh, but I think my next guy, I think Mika Parsons, Micah Parsons. I, I always forget which way to say it. But Parsons I think it's from, Micah. Yeah, Micah. Micah Parsons from uh, Penn State. He's the guy I want here for the Eagles. I think he's going to be the best caliber player for the Eagles because I think I know a lot of people want Patrick uh, Sertan from Alabama. I'm a believer he's also going to be off the board by the time the Eagles pick as I think he's going to land with the Cowboys, if I'm being honest. Hate to see it. Hope I'm wrong in that case. But, uh, no, I think the pick here for the Eagles is going to be Parsons from Penn State. I really like his ability. We obviously need the linebacker depth. I understand we signed Wilson from the Vikings, but I think Parsons can come in here, be a leader on the defense as well, and I think it's going to go a long way for this team. I keep hearing names uh, they want uh, pay from Michigan. I'm a little hesitant on him. I know he he's supposed to be pretty good, but I just feel like that's not even necessarily that. I just don't think he's our first need. I think we're already pretty deep at the edge rusher. We, I mean, we got Graham, you got Fletcher Cox, and I keep going on in that position. I think corner or linebacker or wide receiver is more important. I, that's who I want here. And I, the reason why I go Parsons there, I like. Uh, I think Asante Samuel has a good shot to fall. Asante Samuel Jr. has a good shot to fall to us in the second round. I think that'd be my corner I get there in the second round for the Eagles. That's the guy I'm really hoping falls to the Eagles for their, their second round pick because I really like that uh, Samuel. Uh, out of uh, Florida State. So I'm excited to see where they go uh, in that case. But that's my number one guy there is Parsons and then Samuel. If that happens, I think that's a really good draft uh, for the yeah. top two pick. Yeah, my guy um is similar to you. I think the guy that has no chance of falling, I feel like, in my opinion, the receiver, um, since Pitch is a receiver, but also basically Tony Gonzalez is like how people are hyping this guy up. He's supposed to be the next receiver tight end. That's just the GOAT. Um, so he'll go off the board first. I think Chase will likely be the second receiver. And a lot of mocks I've read have Devontae or Waddle, whoever falls, going to the Giants. But then other mocks have the Giants going O-line or strengthening their defense. So it kind of depends. I think it could hinge on the Giants for if the Eagles could get one of the top three receivers. And if one of those guys falls, especially Devontae and Wada, who have a relationship with Hurts and they're from Alabama, th- that would make perfect sequential sense. If that doesn't happen, I don't think Sewell as a lineman will be there, which would be fantastic. Um, but that ain't happening. So when it comes to left tackle, Chris Sims basically uh, gave me that aha moment earlier when listening to him when they were on the Eagle Eye podcast. I would have Slater ranked first because of his versatility, but then he was saying – he thinks he'll more likely become honed in as a guard rather than a tackle, even though he's played every position in the NFL, where that's when I switched it to the V Tech kid, Derrishaw, because he's a beast. And they think when you look at anyone's scouting report, it says he's a guy you can plug in and play day one. That should be a long term tenured tackle for you. We had Jason Peters here. Uh, coming over, obviously, and we had him for a long time. The Eagles are looking for good stability. Malata played well when he had to put him in, but he's still learning the NFL game after playing rugby for all those years. You don't want to have to throw a hundred level at him. So it's good to have a guy that I think you can have for the long term stability there. Obviously, picking O line is not sexy whatsoever, but it's definitely one of the top three positions if you want to be the most successful you can, unless if you have Russell Wilson as your quarterback who just avoids every tackle in the history of mankind. Um, So that's the only way you would be successful there. So I think he's my first guy for that reason. Um, You said who my second guy would be. Um, Since you went first for the first guy, I'll go first for the second guy. Your first guy is who my second guy would be. Um, I would not be displeased at all, obviously, if they pick Parsons, because Parsons is supposed to be the linebacker that becomes – 
that basically what Darisol can be as your left tackle is what Parsons should be as your linebacker, a guy that can be there for the long and steady and be a pivotal part of your team for years to come. That's what he's projecting. Yeah, he's supposed to be a quarterback of the defense. He really is. Yeah. And, and for a position we haven't had in a very long time success at, I think it's pretty hard to pass that kind of uh, spot up here. Uh, I'm, I just hope we don't mess this Depends up. Depends on the box, though. I'm really like afraid. Jeremiah, yeah, Jeremiah has him ranked 12. But there's some mocks, like Sims and others, like some mocks have Parsons falling. I, I think it's because a lot of the um, guys that sat out, some mocks have those guys falling just because they don't have most recent tape. So it's yeah. going to be interesting to see where he goes, because I think he has a chance to go around where we're at or all the way in the 20s, <laughs> where yeah. like it's, it's going to be interesting to see where Fairley's the same way. He has injury concerns on top of not playing. But like those guys, they all said could move kind of interchangeably um, you have Trey Lance also didn't play this year, but he looks very talented and he's a quarterback, so that will progress him up the numbers a little bit. It's going to be interesting where some of those guys fall. Yeah, so the mock draft I have up right now has the Eagles getting a kid from Michigan, and then in the second round has the Eagles getting a uh, linebacker out of Missouri, Bolton. So I think that's an interesting. Again, you go two defensive guys there, which I'm, I want to be opposed to. I, I'm more worried, to be honest, about the the uh, defense and the offense for next year. And I continue to say, it, if you're able to find a way to grab one of those guys on offense there, I mean, you're not looking at a horrible offense. Obviously, you have a healthy offense line coming back, which is one of the best in the league when they're healthy. You have uh, a pro ball caliber running back in Sanders. You have you have a decent. Not we do have great. a potential hole at yeah. left tackle, though. That's why my first guy was Darishol, because you have Malata ended up filling the need. Malata there. played extremely well. Oh. I, but, I, I'm okay but, with running him out there to start the year yeah. next year. I really am. I, I think he did well enough to earn at least a chance, if not the starting spot there, to, to earn it in training camp. So I, I'm I'm not as worried as the offensive line as I think other people are. Again, I think your bigger biggest holes here coming into the draft have to be the linebacker, uh, cornerback, and wide receiver would be your big thing. And listen, I know a lot of people want to give it to Ertz, but I, I want to bring Ertz back. I, I think the See, duo, I Goddard, have, yeah, I, I think the duo of uh, Goddard and Ertz will be fine there. Again, Pro Bowl caliber running back. If Jalen Hurts can get the time from the line, I think you're going to run in with not a bad offense next year. If if you can be able to steal one of those wide receivers early on in this draft. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have you have linebacker a lot higher than me. Where I think I got. I think when bringing in Wilson, Ruben Frank talking him up from listening to him, how him coming over from the Vikings, he thinks will fit in. Obviously, he knows a hell of a lot more about the inner workings of the team than I ever will. Um, And then you have Singleton. We still need linebacker help, but the point that was made is you don't necessarily need it now because you brought in those guys where cornerback, receiver, and even I would say, yeah, Malata played great, but he's still learning the game, which is a point a lot of guys made. That's why a lot of people think the Eagles will pick a tackle in one of the first three rounds because, like Sims said, and Jeremiah and others, this draft is very deep when it comes to offensive line talent. But he's a good guy to have. I just don't think you want to put that much pressure on him to protect a guy that's a rookie that's still trying to learn the game himself behind him too i think that's a double potential double trouble there i don't think it would be the fault of anybody it would just be you might set them up for failure by accident by putting two guys that are still learning at two of the most pivotal positions guarding his blind spot and then hurts that's still trying to learn the game obviously at the quarterback that's the only way i look at it there where linebacker i put parsons second mostly because i don't think certain will be with us like you said otherwise my second guy a pipe dream. Like the guy I would want is Patrick Sertan, but I don't think her fall to him. Otherwise, I would have put if they if I thought there was an equivalent, a corner there. But I think J.C. Horn is more. How well will he be in this current NFL? Like he's a guy that would have been fantastic, like ten years ago when they yeah. still played and would let you hold a little bit more, grab guys, play more physical. They don't let you do that as much anymore. So my thing with him is I think he'll be good, but what's his ceiling? Because he's going to have to adjust his game, it seems, to not get called for penalties in the NFL. That's why I wouldn't put him second. Ruben Frank, I know, brought up fairly. That's a big concern. You don't want to get guys that have injury history when it came to. Uh, Remember the first time. <laughs> Sidney Jones, yeah, and that didn't work out. But um, I think if it comes to injury history, though, um, 
Phillips might be a guy since he's ra- ranked in a lot of people's, especially Chris Sims is the best defensive guy in the draft, but he's a, he's a edge rusher from Miami just because he, we don't need an edge rusher first and foremost, but sometimes when it says if depending who goes before us, you sometimes pick the best guy on the board. There's definitely a potential that if certain guys go before it, like the Sertons of the world, all the receivers and so on and so forth, or if Parsons yeah. does get picked, then you might go with that route as well. Um, but who would be um, – you never really said who your Stone Cold second guy would be either as a person. Stone Cold second guy? Maybe. I would say, sure. I guess going off of who would be there, again, I think the receivers are going to be gone. I think – I would have to say maybe – so assuming the receivers are off the board, Parsons is off the board then at that point, I'd say my second guy would have to be – I, it's tough. I'd probably either lean towards Slater if he's there, or I, I really like Horn. I, again, you go cornerback there. You can get J.C. Horn from South Carolina at that pick then if he's gone and then go elsewhere for uh, in the second pick. Obviously, you're not going to go back-to-back corner, which I guess you could. But then – and then maybe do what this mock draft had with Nick Bolton at the linebacker spotter. Obviously, there's going to be other receivers out there. So if you go Horn first round, then you go a wide receiver and maybe Tony from Florida, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You can get a little uh, guy in uh, Tony that can kind of run a little bit. Some guys have, I don't think it would be, as, if you're as good as Tyreek Hill, great. But some guys say in terms of athleticism and how you can run those spread plays um, with them, similar to how the Chiefs run the, be- not the Bengals, the Bills run with Josh Allen. Yeah. You would be able to do that if you bring on somebody like him. Um, but we'll move on now since... Um, I already said my second first. I'll let you go first for the – we'll give our top five for who would go for the first-round pick, and then we'll give an opinion on the second round since I think those are the ones that the people care about the most. Then after that is when not the hot, hardcore fans that pay attention to prospects start going. I'll just read about this after. Um, but uh, who would be your third guy at this point then that you think could be there that you would zone in on? In the first round? Yeah, this is still for the first round, yeah. Uh, so, I guess... Hmm. So, I guess third round, I'd have to go Slater. I, I mean, I guess... Uh, no. Uh, I, I guess, yeah, you'd go... I, have to, I guess you have to go at line, uh, offensive lineman at that point if all, the, all my other guys are off the board. I think uh, Slater would be the best pick there. Because, again, I don't think the... Um, guy from Oregon is going to be there, but I don't know if Slater is going to be there either. Like you said, it's going to be kind of depend on what the Giants do there. But I, I, again, I'm a, I'm kind of opposed to getting an edge rusher there at the first round because I just don't think it's a bigger need. I, I put that maybe fifth on your on your draft board in terms of biggest need here, as I think uh, I think those other spots are bigger. So again, I, I, I linebacker, corner, and wide receiver are your biggest needs in my opinion. If those receivers aren't there, I think you pass up on a receiver, and so then you kind of look to, towards the corner. And uh, linebacker spot, and then obviously if they're gone, I'd have to go offensive line there with Rashawn Slater from Northwestern. Okay, that makes sense to me. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's the biggest need. I think it was more. So I seen us pick. Like if I had the decision, I wouldn't pick Jalen Phillips. It's more I'm kind of saying what I think they could do, and I could see them from past I, draft history going with the best. Like I, I feel, I would not be surprised to see them draft pay. I mean, we've seen them draft Barnett with. <laughs> When yeah. when Ed, when Ed Rusher Edge Rusher wasn't a knee, we drafted Derek Barnett, and obviously he's not a, a bad player. Big big plays he's made for us, but again, I think it's not your biggest knee. But we've seen the Eagles pass up on biggest knee before yeah. for confusing picks. So I want to be. I would not be surprised to see uh, Kuwaiti Pay from Michigan get that get that spot. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they get one of those two either. Um, somebody though, just because we obviously um have a key thing that was pointed out. Um, one of our key secondary members in McLeod coming off of a big injury and not the most solidified next to him person. Um, depending, this might be a guy you would trade down a couple picks because you could probably get him there, but he has been projected somewhere around 14 in certain mocks I've looked at is uh, the TCU kid, uh, Murray, because they said he has versatility. He probably could even cover corner, play the corner in coverage position, but is also smooth and fluid at safety where – um, it's good to have, like we had with Jenkins and McLeod, two good safeties on your team, where right now McLeod yeah. is the most steady one and also isn't even steady because he's not healthy yet. So 
I think bringing in some stability there. That's why I would have him ranked third just because of the unknown coming off of such a major injury, even though Rodney McLeod's talented, you never know coming off of that big of an injury. No, nah, without question. I mean, you always got to look at injuries. I feel like that's another spot the Eagles have kind of lacked here in recent history. So you have to be ready for that kind of stuff. You have to be ready to add depth. But again, to me, depth more happens in the, in the later rounds. To me, uh, your first round pick's got to be an area of need, a guy that can impact the season right away. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I do think he could start, though. I don't think you would have to. I mean, if you pick him, I think he Well, first of all, he probably would be starting because there's a possibility that McLeod might not be ready by week one. So that would just happen. by. Well, you'd start Wallace. Um, Potentially, it would depend who does better when they come in, because if you're drafting a guy that high in the first round, if he impresses you early, you're not going to start a later round pick from a prior draft before him, at least in my opinion. Um. But we're moving on. You had go over your first three guys again. Uh, number one guy is Parsons from Penn State. Then I'd go to Horn from South Carolina. And then finally, uh, who did I say? Slater from Northwestern. So a linebacker. Then, And this is against assuming the wide receivers are off the board. Yeah, assuming the wide receivers aren't off the board, I go Smith or Waddle because of, like I said, the relationship with Alabama and they're trained like pros. But like I said, I think they'll be off the board. So just to fully solidify, I think Mulata will start no matter what, but he, could, he they trained him at different positions because they didn't know where he would fully settle at. Uh, it's not like Johnson's getting any younger. We see Lyman retire by 33, so he's still good to have on your team. I, that's why I had Derisol first. Um, second, I had your first guy. Uh, Micah Parsons Mm -hmm. and then um, third we moved a little bit down the list but it was just because of he's still ranked top 16 by Jeremiah who definitely knows his stuff Um, he's uh, Trevin Morig from TCU is who I had third on mine now when it comes to fourth if Parsons is picked by our pick or some guys um, when it comes to ranking the linebackers and you listen to the podcast for the draft for ESPN or NFL or whoever, um, Sims's podcast, whoever you listen to. Um, Some people are torn between who's going to end up the best between Parsons and uh, Jeremiah Awasu Karamo. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that 100% correct, which I'm impressed with myself if I did. Um, From Notre Dame, who I would have ranked fourth just due to the simple fact of if Parsons is picked, I could see them still going linebacker. And then... I think he's still a good enough player. He's ranked 15th by Jeremiah. That's only yeah, if, if you're going him, I'd um, trade down a little bit. Right? You can trade he's, down a bit if you want to get assets. He's projected to go 26 in the mock draft I have up. He's project, okay, but that's in the mock, like in mock drafts. I think the best way to put this is he always, people try to peg where they think guys will go, and nobody's usually ever that correct where something changes the whole entire draft. Where that's where, um, I usually like trying to look at more of where prospects are ranked with, along with a mock draft just because if something throws a screwball, like I think the Falcons are the first potential screwball. If they, they're the team that a lot of people have taken pitch. If they don't take pitch and do something else, then yeah. that throws a wrench in a well, thing. Well, yeah, obviously. But that's why I, I could see them trading down. I just feel like – the biggest thing with the Notre Dame and Bama and teams like that is they train you, whether it was on the line or defense or offense, like you're in an NFL system. It's not as much all like let's just run all these like running like read option or option plays or like the spread all the time. Those, those teams um, try to train you in terms of the interior instinct, something that Sims pointed out when I was listening to him, like you're in the NFL already. So Guys coming from those schools tend to have a good success rate, as well as Penn State. That's why Parsons would be a good guy to get. Coming in right away and showing that they kind of have that pros attitude, but more so than Penn State, those two schools in Bama and Notre Dame kind of instilled the NFL play style into you um, in college also. Yeah. Not without question. That's why I would have him for with um, – where your guy, who would you have as your fourth guy? But, yeah, I agree with you. You could trade down for him, and I would agree that could be the possibility there, and I wouldn't be mad. But if you picked him at 12, I wouldn't be jumping up and down pissed off either because I think he's going to be a pretty damn good linebacker. Yeah. I think 12 is a little bit of a reach, but no, I see your point. You could also trade down for Murray because he'll probably be at 15 if you traded down a couple picks and say the Patriots have been in the realm to be wanting to potentially trade up. You could potentially do that. I'm pretty sure they're 15 if I remember correctly. Gotcha. 
But who would be your fourth guy here that you would have wanted the most? Um, I'd say... Oof. Um, I guess, man, I mean, I guess at this point, if we're taking away all the guys, I'd probably have to go, I guess you go with the edge rusher then and, and pay. Or maybe maybe the wide receiver Bateman out of Minnesota at that point, but even that's probably a stretch. No, it's but, I mean, I think you're going to get one of the guys I've mentioned before because if all the receivers go ahead of time, all those guys are going to be there at the pick because with all the quarterbacks going first round, I mean, so, I, I mean, I'd say – if I had to pick one, I guess probably go. I mean, it sounds contradicting, but he'd probably be the best available. It's probably pay out of Michigan. Yeah, that's a solid pick. Phillips is another one, but then you have you're bringing in a guy with injury, uh, so you got to have his medical card check out, and that's going to obviously ruffle everyone's feathers immediately in Philadelphia because of what's happened um, with injury history. Yeah, you didn't think I would use that old term expression in this podcast, did you? Um, but we can move on. Uh, you can say who you think your fifth guy would be just because I thought it was just cool um, to potentially uh, do it like this. Who your fifth guy would be uh, for the Eagles to get in the first round, and then I'll go after you with this one. And then we'll go into top three guys uh, we would get in the second round, and that would wrap us up for this podcast. And we thank you all for joining. Uh, please like and subscribe. As always, we appreciate your support. But, Andrew, go ahead with your fifth guy. Uh, our, my fifth guy would probably be – Let's see. I mean, I, I guess I'd have to go Bateman. I mean, I guess you need a wide receiver, and that and that'd be a really high pick if you're drafting Bateman at twelve. I mean, I think you'd have to trade down at that point. But uh, yeah, I guess give me, give yeah, give me Bateman from Minnesota. I think he'd be the best fit at this point for a wide receiver spot. And then my three. For the second round, I'd say, again, Asante Samuel Jr. Uh, would be my first pick there because, again, I think he's a very good corner. He'll be fitted the best there, be ready for, for that. And then I'd say next, I would say probably Nick Bolton. If you don't get a linebacker first round, give me Nick Bolton because, again, that's obviously going to be a huge spot. And then I'd say Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle from Alabama, would be pretty big. But, I mean, it's again, the second round is just all going to depend on who you get in the first round. Yeah, and some you guys to go back to back in the position. So, it, I'd say my first receiver would be Tony from Florida for in the second round. Okay, that makes that's sense. all I got. Well, for me, I would say my fifth guy is someone you brought up earlier in uh, your top five for the first round would be Horn, just because I think he has a chance to be good. Like I said. I'm just considering what his full ceiling is going to be, just because of how he plays the physical game that's called so much tighter in today's game than it was only five years ago, let alone 10 years ago, like I mentioned earlier. But I'm going to be interested to see how he adjusts. He is moving up. He moved up two spots in Jeremiah's last ranking. So it's good to see him moving up. I don't understand how guys move up, honestly, right before the draft, because what the hell did they do? Call you and have the best phone conversation in your life. But uh, like, but like, he, he has moved up. Um, I would go with him because I think he's going to be good. I'm just concerned for the peak potential of like being on the Sertan potential level. He doesn't have to adjust his game for the NFL level Sertan where Horn has to potentially because of the way penalties are called yeah. um, nowadays. That's the only uh, level I'm coming from there. But when it comes to the second round, it's going to be interesting because if you look at it's going to be really hard um, if they don't pick corner in the first some mocks because of his everything keeps having this guy falling because of his talent level. I feel like it would be difficult if Fairley's there at the beginning of the second to at that point say, if especially if you try to do enough work and you actually are not stupid and actually look into it more, um, you, your medical history checks out. I feel like it would be tough not to take somebody with that talent level at that point. And I feel like, it would be a risk, but just because the Eagles tend to pick guys with the best um, talents here, I feel like that has a good possibility of happening, uh, going with Fairley if he's still there, just because he's going to be most likely the most talented guy on the board if he falls that much at that point. So that's kind of just yeah. the, the way I'm coming from there. Um, another guy, uh, you talked about Tony. I think another guy that I didn't really – 
No, but like Tony, he's an undersized right, right out with quickness and toughness and versatility, and his release is very good from the jump. Is Elijah Moore from Mississippi? So I feel like if Tony is either not there or you want to pick a different receiver, I'm kind of indifferent between those two because they're both just like more smaller, very athletic, good off the jump receivers that are very athletic. So it's kind of like if you pick either of those two guys, so I push put him even. Like, you had him there, I'll put those guys even at second, I guess, because I'm kind of – it's like a coin toss for me when it comes to those guys. So I'll take either of those two. I think both can get off of the line well and play a very good uh, game, um, just exactly like Tony is as an explosive playmaker. That's exactly <clears> – <throat> excuse me, what Elijah Moore is able to do. I had a frog in my throat there. <laughs> um, third, though, for this round, that's when it gets tough because, like – um. There's a lot of D tackles that people have projected in the second round, but the Eagles don't obviously necessarily need a D tackle. Somebody that I think is going to be one of the better picks in this draft, no matter who gets him. I know we don't need edge rushing that much, but I'm just going to rank him third. I'm also going to be biased here. He is from Penn State, but screw it. Um, Jason O, <laughs> um, I'm going to rank third because I feel like he just has the ability to keep getting better um, and better as time goes on. Um, and I think that's just the way it is. He doesn't have the flashiest sack or um, any of that numbers, but his technique from listening to different experts seems to be very good in tag. He seems to be a guy that'll get off of the line rail and be able to, in the NFL level, as he nurtures and grows and learns with your staff, um, has that compete level. And we know Nick Sirianni from his first few press conferences. For what His second, whatever it is, his second traits or whatever he calls them, is compete level. So, Jason Owa, number three, Penn State <laughs> product. Sounds uh, good to me. Yeah, He's so, going to be a good player. First round pick in most mock drafts. Yeah, Jeremiah has him ranked around the bottom 30. So, like, oh. he could go in first round, but we're at the beginning of the second round. So, that's why I figured I would say if he falls, he's a guy that you could get um, where you never know with these mocks. A perfect example is – the Phillies and Mac Lentax last draft got Casey Morton, who was at the end of a lot of people's first rounds in the damn third round. So every every draft's like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. But do you have any final thoughts, not necessarily on a specific person, but just on the overall draft for the people, uh, for the Eagles going into this draft that starts tomorrow? And I'm, I'm excited to see this draft get, get going. I'm a little nervous, too, with the Eagles' past draft history, but hopefully it's a good one. Ready to get ready to get after it. I got my uh, this is the draft half from this year, so ready okay. already supporting that one. And they got my Rager jersey on from last year's draft. So uh, excited to see where this goes and what what new gear I can get after tomorrow. Yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes. I hope they don't make a mistake. I think um, the big thing is the Eagles did not really like they got guys that were a good part of the interior line contributed to the Super Bowl. Like Chris Sims made the point when he was on Eagle Eye, they just never got the sexy draft pick that stood out as much as other people, or they took a longer to stand out like Graham did. It wasn't immediate, so people don't remember that he actually was a pretty good draft pick as much as guys that immediately strike. Um, I think that's just the way it is. The Eagles of late straight away from what they're supposed to do, where before they at least got those middle guys that actually helped to contribute to the Super Bowl team these last two years. It's been, you see reports that Howie just deliberately does not did not yeah. listen to the scouting staff, which that's something like you said you're worried about. That's my final point. He just has to listen to the damn scouting staff. They're paid for a reason. I think Andy Wheel, I hope I said his name right, Wield, uh, for our assistant GM there, assistant president of, a, of not basketball operations, football operations, um, he came on and talked to John Clark about the draft. He seems like he's committed to listening to the scouting staff. He's only talked them up 800 separate sentences. <laughs> so um, I would hope now having him since 2019 hasn't seemed to help yet, but hopefully he's a voice how he keeps trusting more over time. And him along with the scouting staff would actually make him not just pick a guy that he wants, which is apparently what our Sega White side was, who looks like a complete bust at this point. We'll have to see this is probably his last chance to do anything. And then Reger, who isn't a bust, but is not to the degree he could have got Justin Jefferson. So it's uh, it's kind of the way it is. That's my final thought. Just listen to your damn scouting staff. You pay them and have them for a reason. And also listen to your assistant, your vice president as well, because he's paid and you have him for a reason. So that's kind of my final thoughts on it. 
I hope everyone enjoyed this um, NFL draft edition for our Philadelphia Eagles podcast here at Sports Fanatic News. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great, safe, and pleasant rest of your week, everybody. Peace out. Have a good one, everyone. Go Birds. Yeah, go Eagles. Fly, Eagles, fly.